everybody, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with us we have today Norman Sanso. Hello, guys. And Lionheart Cartoons. Hello. And Silverquill. Urge to fan rage, rising. <laughs> oh no, we have to. Okay, we have to get to this immediately because someone is going to tingling. <laughs> it's a very feathery meteor. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> and we are going to be reviewing the Fluttershy micro-comic micro written by Barbara Randall Castle and drawn by Tony Flix. And I think I really want to give the spotlight immediately to Silver Quill because he is very opinionated about this one. All right. Yes, opinionated. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of my shtick, but... <laughs> but for anyone who ever says that, to the Fl that Fluttershy fans, of which I am one... They say, oh, they'll love whatever she's in. They'll just eat her up. No, I will point to this comic and say, no, no, <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong because this comic makes you wrong. And that's its only redeeming feature. Wrong. Because reasons. <laughs> because reasons. Yes, this, for a time, this was, in my opinion, the worst comic put forth by IBDW. The one with the greatest uh, flaws in storytelling, characterization, and even world building. Then Friends Forever number one came out, so you know, that's a that's a fish for another day. Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah. And and I'm not entirely alone in this because fellow reviewer Voice of Reason posted an entire video where he declared this the worst thing ever produced by My Little Pony. Period. Oh my God! Really? Yes, I think. You know what? I'm I, I'm worried not to speak for him, but the implication I took away is that this thing trumps even. G3 and 3.5 and all that stuff. Huh. Wow, wow, that's going very far. Okay, we it, it is. I, I don't, what's... I don't, I don't go that far. But the Fluttershy micro, after some debate with myself, I put it as the least of the micros. Mm -hmm. It's the one that just it just didn't work. Okay, and that's unfortunate because it, despite the image I'm presenting, I do think it did some things well. But, unfortunately, this is one of those cases where the bad overshadows the good. Mm. Mm. Okay, if you say so. Believe me, I know exactly where you're coming from, because I think this is going to repeat when we reach the Applejack micro with me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, my God, this is going to repeat itself. But, okay, so what makes this the least good of the micros, in your opinion, Silver? Well, if I could go through it. Piece by piece, it's kind of the it's it's as the story unfolds that it becomes the issue. So if you don't mind my stealing the summarizing this time around, you know what? Go for it because I th th right this is this is your spot. You're in the spotlight right now. You have everybody looking at you. All like two people that might listen to the show anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> you have the spotlight right now. Go for it, Silver. All right, so we start off, it's Fluttershy, and, she, and surprise, surprise, she's going to visit her animal friends. <gasps> what a twist. <laughs> but she sees that Slurza Celestia is holding an extreme art contest. We never really learn what's so extreme about it, but she steals it, fl flees back to her home, and reveals that she has a secret art layer under, under her cottage. The Chamber of Extreme Knitting also known as the, pa the Palace of Friendly Gro Pony Grotesqueries. Really rolls off the tongue there. <laughs> and actually, this is something I want to praise about the comic. They took one kind of throwaway joke from Suited for Success, her freaky knowledge of sewing, <laughs> and they gave her a hobby out of it. And looking, there's a two-page spread where she introduces this Palace of Friendly Pony Grotesqueries there. Nailed it. But... Uh, and while I'm not as big a fan of the art in this comic, I gotta give whoever uh, came up with those yarn textures credit. That had to be incredibly tedious to put together. You know, the swish marks. I can tell you one thing, is that if you get a very good Photoshop filter, you can get those done in no time. But getting them done in so many different patterns and so many different objects... That takes a lot of time, so it definitely deserves a big kudos for the art design. Yeah, I will I will fault them for the texture. <laughs> well, it is a flat texture, but it, it works with the lighting. It, it gains definition, so I think it's accomplishing a lot it with works a little. Well, yeah, but of course now this is Fluttershy, so yes, class. What can we say her problem will be? She's nervous, <laughs> and yet with She's some insecure. very. 
Yeah. But it was some very bizarre prodding from Angel, who I will admit looks good in a beret. <laughs> uh, and that's Dali. She, she goes in disguise. And this is where things start to fall apart. Up until now, I'm like, hey, this is a pretty fascinating idea. It's a, it's a, it's something Fluttershy's done that we've never seen before, and it's building off a, a lesser known aspect of her character. Good on you guys. But then two security guards offer to help her set up her, um, her piece, and she snaps at them right away. And I get the sense that we're, they're falling into the same trap that many people do when they write Fluttershy. They write her as either a wimp or a rageaholic. It's binary, zero or one, on, off. Oh, yes, yes, I agree. On that. There's very little middle ground in all of this. And things take a turn for the worse when pra- Praiser Pan, the infamous and harsh art critic, comes through and is basically tearing everyone's artwork to pieces. And given that most of the artwork we see in the backgrounds is uh, just covers the IDW comics with filters on top of them, I, w- I would actually be calling uh, attorneys for plagiarism. <laughs> and things really start to go wrong when I realize that Rarity is part of this entourage, that she's falling in with this guy who's basically just there to tear others down. So Fluttershy, of course, is freaking out. Rarity blows her cover because she has couture vision. Is it? My sizing couture sense is never off, she says. <laughs> so what's it's like everyone... detective vision in the Batman games, but with couture. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, her superpower. And so once the uh, once the point is see an artist right in front of them, they start saying, you know, uninteresting, dull, unfashionable. Uh, basically, it's a YouTube comment section. <laughs> Oh god! Uh, yeah, it yeah, yeah. And it, uh, it has the same level of of quality and value as a YouTube comment section. <laughs> <laughs> so Fluttershy is about ready to destroy it, just from a freak out. You know, classic Fluttershy freak out. They even copied the face from uh, Best Night Flutter, Ever. Flutter Rage, yes. Flutter Rage, but she decides that no, she's not going to ruin it. She likes it, and that's all that matters. And, of course, because we need a happy ending, Princess Celestia shows up, says she likes it, so everyone else likes it, so Fluttershy wins the contest. So, and here's the big things that stand out for me on this, as I pretty much spoiled the whole comic for whoever's listening. Hi. (laughs) One, what is a micro-comic supposed to really do? I mean, we've seen all the ponies so far have have faced a different kind of challenge in their own way. And in some ways, and the best comics, in my opinion, are the ones that show a character at their weakest, but also show them at their strongest. The, it celebrates what makes them a great character. This didn't do that for Fluttershy. It shows her weakest as she's freaking out about public criticism and being in the spotlight. No complaints on that. But Rarity is the one who encourage her, encourages her not to let the criticism get to her. Rarity is the one who gives her the push and stands up for the art, artistic uh, community, Rarity's the hero in this. And she already had a really good comic. She yeah, she kind of still... She does steal the spotlight in Fluttershy's own comic. I have to disagree. But carry on. Uh, okay. So, so with Voice of Reason, and this part I, I think I am okay in quoting him, his big grief was that he thought the theme of the comic was to ignore criticism to just turn a deaf ear towards anyone who has anything negative to say. And that's an incredibly toxic idea for uh, artists, writers, anyone who's trying to put forth a creative work. Hmm. You, need, you need to hear some negative feedback to challenge you. Fraser Pan is not a critic. He's not giving feedback. He is tearing someone else's work down to make himself look smart. That is the extent. If you look at any of his lines in this comic... He never once talks about uh, form, form, style, design, layout, shape, perspective, absolutely nothing. All it is is him saying the worst thing and really going after the artists and not the work. That is, and as someone who's trying to style himself as a reviewer, that is the most toxic and negative approach. It is worthless because it doesn't help anyone. It's just a shallow attempt at making yourself look smart. And I will agree with Voice that the fact that everyone changes their tune as Celestia says, oh, I like this, 
just shows the dishonesty that we've actually witnessed in the show itself, making me question why Rarity even wants to be part of this Canterlot uh, elite. So I have Fluttershy, who never really gets a chance to shine. Rarity, who in some ways steals the spotlight. Totally. The villain, who is not a representation of an honest criticism or constructive criticism. And almost no likable ponies in the entire piece. I mean, even, I'm still sort of like, Rarity, why are you following this jerk around? You should, I honestly think she would think very poorly of him. So I'm looking for, I'm looking through this comic, and I think it had such a strong start with an unexpected style. You know, the the knitting, the freaky knowledge of sewing and knitting. But it fell apart at the end and never got to celebrate Fluttershy. When it comes to your comment about criticism, I think that the comic is saying, don't pay attention to this type of criticism. You yourself said that this uh, troop of critics, they are more, uh, they are closer to a Jude of comment section than to real honest to, honest to God criticism. I don't know about you guys, but anytime I go to YouTube, the last thing I do, the, the one thing that I don't do, that I do, uh, is ignore the comment section. That's the worst thing you can do, listen to those comments. Uh, also, there is, there is one thing regarding Fluttershy as an artist, is that she is the typical insecure artist who is never happy with what they create and doesn't, doesn't know how to handle criticism of any kind. And that I can relate to way too much. I am very insecure when it comes to my artwork. I am never sure if what I am producing is good, it's okay, or if it's making people happy, or if it's pissing them off. That is something that I can totally relate with Fluttershy there. It's not handled well, because she reacts in the worst way possible, like, you know, wanting to destroy her piece. But, I mean, at least it's there and it's acknowledged. I think in that regard the comic is somehow successful, maybe? But I will agree with Silver, when it comes to character, Fluttershy is a background character in her own comic. The spotlight is stolen by everyone else, by by Rarity, by the... Even the critics have more development as uh, characters than Fluttershy do, uh, does. They At least the critic, the... the, the uh, the one who's hating on the on the art piece, at least he has kind of an arc going on, where he starts hating it, and because Celestia likes it, he changes his opinion somehow. At least there is some sort of three-dimensional personality going on there, which is something that Fluttershy doesn't have. I see more as him just sort of being a, a, a sellout on his own integrity. I'm doing this to be popular. So I'll yeah, agree. To, to, I, and you bring up a, a good point with Fluttershy's... Um, insecurity about as an artist i i did gloss over the fact that throughout most of the comics she's trying to explain the meaning of her art and there's a there was a funny quote uh from a at an art museum showing of, of modernism uh some a guy said well a lot of people come to work and say i don't see why this is so good and he would reply well then you didn't look hard enough hmm. uh i feel like with arts and with a lot of pieces if you have to explain why it works to people, it's really not accomplishing its job or the or its goal. People have to look, they have to give it time to appreciate, but if you have to flat out tell them, as Fluttershy does throughout this comic, that's not working. That's like trying to explain a joke when you just told it. It's like if you're trying if you're explaining the joke after you just said the joke, because nobody's laughing, it's not that people didn't get the joke, it's that you didn't make the joke funny. And also is, on the, if there is a purpose to it. Sometimes yeah. the, the meaning is for the viewer to find out, either for themselves or for their own little ego. Because the, you don't always have to explain something. If there is a figurative or an actual meaning to what you want to convey and it doesn't work, well, okay, you may have to think about it. But if there is something else that is not supposed to be seen and sometimes just is supposed to be abstract, then no, there's no explanation to be given. It's like, um, I remember this one, someone was just standing in front of a picture of someone with a, a cello or a violin, a, it was a string instrument, and 
the observer was just looking at the picture and someone stopped and said, what do you see in this? The person just lifted his hands. I'm listening to the music. That person decided to see and feel and hear the music just from the picture, but the other one didn't get it. That doesn't mean the art is bad, but it just doesn't convey to some to the same person or the same character. This reminds me a lot to uh, two things. Um, in the audio commentary for Titanic, the, the James Cameron's Titanic, the first thing that James Cameron says is, I don't believe in audio commentaries because a movie should speak for itself. That is absolutely true. And the other thing that it reminds me of is uh, the Nostalgia Critic made a, a, an editorial a few weeks ago about how there are, sometimes there are movies that don't follow the three-act structure, mm-hmm. like uh, 2001 mm-hmm. Space Odyssey or Tree of Life or uh, I think it was uh, Barton Fink, that are very weird in the way they are put together and he hates when he hated when people say either we don't get it or oh you don't get it because you are not smart enough. I hate people like that as well. Sometimes you look at something, you look at a piece of art, and it doesn't say anything to you, or it says something to you that that's different from what other people are saying. That's yeah, very similar it to what. Doesn't make it bad. It just makes it different to the person watching it. That's very similar to what's going on in the comic. Is that those uptight critics are not seeing anything in the in the statue, but uh, Rarity and Princess Celestia do see it. And because Princess Celestia sees something in it, then the others follow suit because they have no personality. No integrity. Like, oh, yeah, they have no integrity. Oh, oh, wait a minute. The, oh, the Mr. President likes the statue, likes this piece of art. I like it as well. Oh, I'm going to give it a glowing review. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, Reading it the second time through, I enjoy it more because of, well, what we are doing here. We're reviewing comics, we're reviewing episodes. And for me to read this through and feel what Fluttershy is feeling with how insecure she is with her work and how she wants it, how she wants to show it to the public, but still a bit shy about it. Like, for me, um, I, I can be in this boat too because we produced this episode, we put it on YouTube for the world to see and hoping people like it but you know if they don't like it I mean yeah sure yeah it's just one aspect of a whole spectrum of things that could have and maybe would have happened depending but there was you can't explore all aspects at the same time Mm, true true that and also when I'm looking at what she's going through like um, this critic person he bashes people out without giving any good reason to it like what you guys said a YouTube comment and I'm not going to say anything about Rarity being in that group because you know you have to bump elbows with people who are up there and sometimes those people are greasy and well with the critic here he well he bashes Rare and Fluttershy's work too and as it goes on Fluttershy says please move on because I don't want to hear your comments and whatnot. Rarity here notice Fluttershy with her couture vision and, well, reveals who the artist is. And, well, that's when chaos starts. And the Discord is nowhere to be seen. Yeah, I know. Well, this, <laughs> was released, this was released before they established Discord as oh. Fluttershy's friend in the comics. Oh, God. If Discord was here and he... Oh, God, no. Yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> my God. You don't want to see the result of what would have happened. The critic would have ended up with a plaid coat and a polka dot beret that, that doubles as a keystone hat. Oh, God. Yeah, but, but anywho, um, here you guys say that, oh, um, I'm opening up here and like say, um, oh, ignore them. I know to what it's like to blah 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 and all that stuff like yeah true but the thing is Fluttershy here she's proud of her work she is but the thing is people are bashing it and she's nervous she's having anxieties now and the way she's feeling she wants to crumple a little ball and cry because people are well saying her work is crap and once you're pushed to that point where people say it's trash of course you're going to react negatively. And yeah. at this point here, she gets back to her senses saying no. And the line here is, no, I'm not going to ruin it. I made it. I like it. And that's all that matters, no matter what you say. And that to me makes this 
whole comic worthwhile. And to have Princess Celestia saying that it's awesome validates her opinion and makes her feel good about it. And, well, of course, you have Fleur de, uh, Fleur de Lis saying that it's meh. Well, meh. Yeah, uh, at least, you, you know, I, you just made me realize of something, is that the appearance of Princess Celestia at the end, saying that it's pretty, that it's cool, that it's, oh, it's so beautiful, I love what you created, Fluttershy. I think that's kind of like a soothing balm after what happens with those terrible critics. Like, mm-hmm. if... If this was more realistic, is this if this continued like this? Celestia would have said, "This is beautiful," and the critics would have continued saying, uh, "It's bad. It's terrible. <laughs> it's so horrible." That would have been realistic. That, that wouldn't that because that usually is what happens. No, it's like no, when no. someone has an opinion, they don't change it. They stand by it. No, not, not Especially when they are not when they are so. Op- as opinionated as the critics are. Yeah, but not this critic, James. Not this critic. This critic that, that's is, exactly what yeah. I mean. Yeah. This, this critic is something this else critic... different. No. Exactly, uh, because it's something something else different. Uh, go go ahead, honest, Silver. I don't know how Siskel and Ebert would have reacted if they had to disagree with uh, the uh, president. The president. Mm. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I mean, Sis- knows? Siskel and Ebert, their, their personalities by themselves, they have their own thing. And with them, when they <laughs> review a movie, they give their up and down. So at least... They're not one-sided as in, like, oh, this is total crap. And they have their movies that they like and dislike. And when they review a movie, they always have the guy who's positive and negative, and they have a balance here. And with this guy here, every art he saw was trash. There's no redeeming value in his reviews. Well, so, you know, and Ebert had their little shit yeah, going on that they made sure yeah. that they said, we don't recommend well, it. You know, mm-hmm. it's an opinion. Whereas this guy is like, I'm the authority... You have to believe me when I say it's crap, mm. it's crap. There's no both other words to, to be said about it. Yeah, like, like you just said, Lion, Siskel and Ebert, both of them, they were well open-minded that they would have been able to uh, backtrack or stand by their opinions mm-hmm. and explain what they, th- the, what they thought well enough that even if you don't agree with them, you can at least understand why they are saying that. Is uh, Silver, you are the best example right here. I think the first time that I agreed with one of your reviews was when you did uh, Simple Ways. <laughs> that was the first time that I agreed with one of your videos. But I enjoyed every single one of your videos because you explained yourself so well. Mm-hmm. And, and you, that's you didn't the... agree with me? That is a tool. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, I, I so didn't do it. But that, that, that doesn't matter because your videos are so good and you explain yourself so well that I can totally understand where you're coming from, why you think like that, and... What? Why you have that opinion? That's exactly it. And that's what this guy, that's what this uh, critic in the comic is not doing. He is establishing himself as, oh, my my opinion is completely objective. It's an opinion. It's <laughs> subjective by default. You cannot call an opinion objective. That is being, that is, that is, that is impossible. <laughs> true that, true that. Well, I, I want to mention, um, with Norman Smith, that you have that for rarity, you need to sometimes play to unlikable guys just as part of the social ladder. Mm-hmm. Th- that in in real life, that is unfortunately part of it. You have to smile and shake hands with someone you'd rather deck. <laughs> True that. But the thing is, when I think of um, sweet and elite, which I, I believe came out before this, and rarity's presentation throughout. Um, throughout the show, interacting with social types, she will ter- certainly gush over celebrities like Photo Finish, but I've never seen her be dishonest in her views. And I just can't see Rarity, a very cr- the most creative of the group, agreeing with a guy who tears down others. I don't think this- she agrees. She's more yeah. being very sarcastic. She goes, yes, some ponies... But isn't that an act of agreeing with right her? I, I think there's an eye roll yeah, she, here where she was kind she, of well, psychastically... She probably tries yeah. just that the, yeah, the critique goes, some other ponies think that we adore seeing their little trite collections on display. They confuse art with hoarding. That's an never happened just, to you. The right next panel, she just goes, she's very disdain, just, yes, some ponies, as in some ponies do confuse art with hoarding, but she, she's taking it somewhat personally, and she mm. voices herself, whereas the others barely say anything at all. Yeah, it could be I taken will, it that way, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
like, if you are like, okay, imagine like, I, I'm not sure about me, but okay. You are a social animal like Rarity, for mm-hmm, example, mm-hmm. and you end up hanging out with all different sorts, and you hang out with people that you click with, and maybe those people, they hang out with other people that you don't uh, connect with, or that they don't share your uh, your same opinions. I'm pretty sure that she is just hanging out with them because they are part of the elite, and Rarity has become part of the elite in, in Canterlot, mm-hmm. so... To me, it kind of makes sense that she will be hanging out with them because they are the artistic type and maybe Rarity doesn't feel like she agrees with them, but hey, this is going to put a lot of points in her social standards. Mm, true, true. I, I, kind of, I can see it that way and I can see Lion's Way too, but I'm more leaning to Lion's Way too where she's just being like, oh yeah, that's art. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I roll. Yeah, you know what you're talking about. Ugh. She exposes her collections all the time and suddenly someone just takes a jab without even knowing her, you know, she decides to go, just go. But that's one of the few problems with this comic that I found, if I go Linkara on it. <laughs> um, I mean, there's... I found that really Angel is kind of out of character. <laughs> He's usually that really annoying... Self, uh, uh, selfish true, rabbit, true. and now he's like no, helping her no. all the way around. Not really. I, you know what? I am going to defend Angel here, <laughs> even though I know that Silver, Silver hates the guts out of the bunny. I know that. I don't hate Angel. He just doesn't seem like he fits in the canon that was established for him. Uh, true. No, but don't you him remember right now. We if you like him that Angel. way, that's awesome. But that's not. Uh, <laughs> that didn't seem to fit like right in Imagine there. It's, it, he Angel felt like he was forced Father into place. Spine. Angel is Fluttershy's spine. <laughs> when it comes to being insecure on anything, Angel is the one that is going to slap her in the face and sh- put her back into shape. Mm-hmm. True, Do you true. remember the episode Hurricane Fluttershy? Mm-hmm. Of course. The one moment when... I, I, I wasn't a fan of Angel up until that episode. And I still am not. But in that episode, it demonstrated me that he has kind of like a tender side to him mm-hmm. in that he is taking care of Fluttershy while she's just crying and... Uh, sobbing after having that panic attack in front of everybody. So I am like, he has a tender side to him. We could see it more often. And uh, from what we saw in, in seasons three and four, at least he is not that bit of a, that sure. bit of an asshole. Mm. <laughs> uh, but it, 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 it's probably not out of character for him to do that. It's perhaps an exaggeration of mm, that probably. good side of him we have seen in the, in the show. Mm-hmm. If Rolly is uh, taking it, taking it way too far in that he can be nice sometimes. Yeah, but now if you have sometimes. to explain it to me, then the comic didn't really do a yeah. good job. I, I well, don't know. To, to me, when I saw Angel here, he was the supportive type. Like, he even tells Fluttershy to, you know what, you should go. I, I don't care. Go. But Fluttershy is already being super nervous. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to push yeah, you. But, because yeah, Fluttershy, nervous, that's already something that has been established. And playing playing on it like this... You know, it's not a bad mini. It's uh, compared to the others, however, it's not the best one either. Rarity's yeah. arc was kind of nice. Oh, I mean, true uh, that. I, I do Twilight, understand. Twilight, well, it was the bookworm episode, but still, it's uh, uh, there was a lot of stuff in it that seemed very just pushed. And yeah, Angel to me didn't really seem like he mm. was being Angel. He was that cute little fuzzy guy that you see in every other Disney sh- Disney oh. movies. All right, all right. I'm going to blow oh, oh. I'm going to blow James' mind for a minute because I am actually going to defend Angel. <laughs> oh, good, 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 awesome. Right ahead. Brace right yourself, awesome. yourself. Actually, there was a re- recent uh, YouTube video uh, while Doctor Wolf is on vacation. Uh, some other reviewers came in, and one made a very uh, strong argument to defend Angel. And it's true that most of my dislike of him came from that scene in Putting Your Huff Down, where he. Slapped Fluttershy, and it wasn't even comedic. He's he's given her a bonk before when she was doing something stupid, and he needed to push her into action. He is he is her spine, or just trying to push her to be better in sort of a rough way, but not in a spousal abuse kind of way, which is what I got from uh, putting her up down. So the thing is, though, ever since then, he's shown off as more selfish that he's manipulating everyone. He's not just uh, he's not just being strict with Fluttershy. He is uh, playing everyone to show just how two-faced he is. And uh, in what was it, Castlemania, 
the fact that Fluttershy fell down a pit and his next action was to find a bowl of carrots. <laughs> Those are the episodes that hurt my view of him. Now, in this comic, he's trying to encourage her by holding up a, a palette and paintbrush, by dressing in artistic uh, hipster tr- clothing, then a suit tie and mustache. That's not the angel in the show. And that, I agree, that's where he's, his presentation doesn't feel as genuine. Uh, a couple pages later, when Fluttershy's at the event, uh, and Fluttershy's starting to say, oh, I never should have come here, he's stamping his foot and giving her kind of a rhythmic pat on Happy. the leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not like a reassuring pat. It's like, what are you saying? <laughs> that's that's more the angel we know. That's more in character. That's more in line with his style than having him play dress up. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, I think the only time he ever did dress up was when he was making that salad for Twilight <laughs> in the Ticketmaster. And the fact that I remember that says so much about me. <laughs> <laughs> but would you say that this version of uh, Angel is almost the same like how you categorize? Shining Armor and Cadence. More more likable? Not really, because he's not... Cadence and Shining Armor had a role in center stage. No, no, what, what I meant was, there's three versions, the show, comic, and fan fiction. Oh, for me, there are three versions of Angel. There's, uh, there's the TV version, there's Dinner, and there's Roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Well done. And I'm, and I'm the driver. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, okay, I completely, I completely agree with all of, oh, with all of uh, what you have said, but I still, ca- I cannot hate a character who decides to dress as Salvador Dali to inspire someone else. Like, I don't this... hate the guy. I just it <laughs> felt wrong in the comic, essentially. No, no, no. I mean, me myself, because I, I despise Angel with all of my heart. In that, I don't like the character. I don't like the way that uh, he treats Fluttershy more often than not. I mean. He, he goes way too far. The, the put in your hoof episode, put in your hoof down episode. That that episode hurt me so much, and it hurt so many characters, and the way that I perceive so many characters, and Angel included. <sighs> but then the, here comes this comic, and there is the Angel dressed as Salvador Dali with yeah, a massive the mustache. Angel and the, yeah, so I am like, that's that's. The, I just noticed. I just noticed that the panel even has the melting clocks in the background. It's like, <laughs> I cannot hate these guys. It's against my religion or whatever. I cannot do that. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I think yeah. we we as this is a different kind of review we, style we have because usually we are super positive. Now we're really having a conversation here. It's funny how when we say we like something, there's not really much to discuss. But when you say you don't like something. Oh, the f- the floodgates open something fierce. Yeah, true. I mean, oh, this is uh, this is, is awesome. This is awesome. There is one. Th- there is one thing that I didn't mention. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that oh, I don't think I even addressed my opinion. On the oh, comic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that, I, I will agree with that. The fact that the characters are not all that there. That yeah, Rarity completely swallows the spotlight, and uh, she she chews the scenery with her facial expressions and all that, and. <laughs> Fluttershy seems so boring, and like there is, there is always the same thing: is that oh, Fluttershy is shy, she's socially insecure. Let's break those barriers, but then she doesn't want to break them. But then she becomes angry, but then she's apologetic, but then everything turns fine. And that's every single Fluttershy episode since like season one. <laughs> every single episode since season one, and they didn't change anything on the comics and. They did That's one annoying, more thing in the comic. But, they decided to but, push the uh, the, the uh, flutter rage again. And you're going to love me. <laughs> but the one thing that I like on the comic, and this is one thing that keeps uh, it's constant during the entire thing. The visual style is awesome. Oh, mm-hmm. I, mean, I, mm-hmm. I love I love the knitting statues. I love the 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 facial expressions. I love how soft and uh, s- soft and tender, the whole color scheme feels. It feels like pastel colored, with uh, a very toned down, a, a very toned down color palette. And I love the the different uh, 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 camera angles and the way they, they and the use of perspective in this comic is so good. 
it does feel like uh, it, half of the comic takes place walking in a museum. It does feel like walking in a museum at, mm-hmm. at some points. That is the best part of the comic. The visual style is just fantastic. And just for that, I will give it a I will give it a pass. I will give, like if we're talking about scores or stars, I will give it a solid three uh, stars out of five. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. I mean, uh, everyone has their own opinion and stuff. And I, I guess, I'm guessing everyone is set in their um, point of views on this comic, and no one's going to change anyone's opinion, right? I view I view these talks as more food for thought mm. for whoever's listening. It's not necessary to decide. This is right or wrong. All right. All right. Uh, what can yeah, I say? Uh, uh, I've talked to some. I've talked. I've talked to critics who, some of whom, were rather like uh, Praise Pan, and <laughs> you know, they have to be right. It has to be as they say. You know, I'm not a fan of this. I am a fan of Fluttershy, but if someone else enjoys it for various reasons, hey, I'm glad there are people who get enjoyment out of it. Because okay. the worst thing would be if we were all united and saying this is awful. Oh, no. That, 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 that can't be good. There's something that, wrong no, with us then. That would mean either, one, the fandom has become so hive mind that it's no longer interesting, or this book really was so awful that there was n- absolutely nothing to be that enjoyed. people can invest in. Yeah, and that would be a tragedy. Mm-hmm, true. That. I personally take these uh, these reviews as... To learn someone else's point of view. Mm-hmm. Because if you only have your point of view or your opinion on something, then you become... Uh, uh, it's not single-minded. What's the word? Zombie. Uh, it's, like you, you, it's like you completely disregard everybody else's opinions. Then that doesn't make you better. It actually makes you more stupid. Mm, it, 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 makes you, it, make, it makes you dumber. You need to have other perspectives uh, in order to understand a whole. Because then you can see things from a completely different point of view. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I always, I always come out of these uh, reviews with my own, op- with my same opinion, but also being being able to see things from a different perspective. That, do I agree? Do I disagree? Yeah, of course. But this is good, it, and also it gives me the chance to learn about other things. That uh, hell, we end up talking about all. Uh, other subjects, <laughs> because sidetrack is the keyword when it comes to doing these reviews. Indeed, <laughs> but that's the fun thing is that it flows very well, and oh, that's well, why if you come out of this with nothing. Oh, oh no. yeah, it's pointless. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it, it. I never set myself as hey, okay. I'm gonna change everybody's opinion, and I'm not going to stop until they all think like me. No. I never do that. Who will do that? Only an idiot will do that. True that. True that. I mean, um, the the point of reviewing. Is just so that we can express our thoughts on said subject. In this case, the micro that we're talking about right now, and how we're feeling, what we're thinking. If you change your mind because of what we said, that's awesome. But if not, hey, at least you know how we feel. Lion has a different opinion. James has a different opinion. Silver has a different opinion, and I have a different opinion too. I kind of highly enjoy the comic because of what it represents in terms of accepting, reviewing, and reviewing as a whole. And I don't know, I, I can't say for the rest of you, but yeah, that's how I feel about this comic. I did want to point one thing that I thought could have strengthened this comic without changing a lot of the elements. Uh, we, we say that I will agree that you need to uh, ignore people like Fraser Pan and the YouTube comments that really offer nothing constructive. Yeah, but the tragedy for me is that that was the only representation of criticism in this comic. And I guess oh, sorry, one sorry. angle of a full spectrum. Yes. Yeah, we only got one. We only got that one angle. And the funny thing is, we have we have Fluttershy speaking of her passion for Anything. uh her arts. Mm-hmm. What if instead of having her just quiver in the corner, what if she were trailing the group far behind? And offering more constructive criticism to the artist that Fraser has just dashed. Mm, I shouldn't have used dashed. In the corner, in a way. Well, yeah. remember because we were talking about Fluttershy. I'm pretty sure that even if she got any positive criticism, she would have been coward. Uh, she won't like uh, coward uh, about it. Do you remember uh, Philip Vanilli? Do you think that um, you know? <laughs> Like, okay, do you so, remember? Do you remember Philly Vanilli when she was discovered that she was singing behind the curtain and everybody was applauding her, and that didn't matter? She still had a panic attack. Mm-hmm. I, I think 
Also, I think they, they did go with this one type of critic, perhaps because it's the most frequent to encounter. Mm, true that, true that. Remember know. that they, they, are the, they are like uh, mushrooms. They appear everywhere. Mm-hmm. Over well, not, that, not that Fluttershy would, would praise her own work, but encourage the other points. Because I do think that her kindness does shine through over her uh, timidity. Mm. So, I... and the idea that when it came time for her work to be panned, the other artists would stand up for her. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think uh, that would have been more satisfying. Yeah, mm. that's true. I mean, but honestly speaking, um, to me, I don't see this as, um, except uh, ignoring this kind of review and accepting other kind of review. To me, in this micro, it's not about accepting reviewing or accepting uh, comments. To me, the no. yes, yes. point of this comic is to believe in oneself and to believe in your work, no, no matter what other people say. In this case, if someone gives a stupidly negative comment, like what Praiser Pen is saying, just believe in yourself. If nobody's going to believe in yourself, then nobody's going to believe in you. No, That's... but I kind of agree with Silver here. If there was something to change about the comic, I would probably concentrate oh, yeah. more on the kindness that Flourish I could have shown to the other artists, oh, either true. before or after Praiser Pan has been there, because I, I remember, I don't remember all of the, the, the yeah, meanies yeah. in there. I remember Twilight's. She managed to get someone to open to friendship. Mm-hmm. Rarity, she got to express her own generosity towards those that she, they were being very generous with her in a way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in there, Fluttershy's kindness does n- almost not shine at all. Oh, true. That. I mean, if we're talking about... Uh, here here I go back again when I was talking about what I didn't like about the Rainbow Dash micro. Uh, it was didn't show, show Rainbow Dash's element and also didn't tell a good proper story or proper lesson and here I can agree with you guys where Fluttershy's element didn't really shine but to me the lesson is still there so it gets a pass from me the rainbow micro is my second lowest on the on the ladder unfortunately I too had issues with the its presentation it always comes down to is this comic celebrating this character mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because quite frankly the reason I'm going to buy uh, an Applejack, a Fluttershy, or a Rarity Micro is because I want to see this character at their best. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine if they have to hit their worst first. <laughs> but uh, if I if I don't like this character, period, I'm not going to buy the Micro, period. I think that's why the Canes and Shining Armor uh, two-parter may have suffered a little. Just people were so biased against the characters, they didn't want to give it a try. Uh, that's not fair, but still, I do understand. I do understand. So, uh, anyway, uh, what do we like about this comic in terms of scenes and whatnot? Because that first scene where Fluttershy has a secret dungeon, I mean, basement, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, if she's a that, secret dungeon, this is getting to Slash Fig territory. <laughs> that, is definitely, that is definitely the point where the comic is uh, it starts showing how good it is in the visual department. Is that that's, that's, that's cool. They definitely... It definitely shows that they took their time to uh, work on that, add a bunch of details. You can even see a neat, in, a neat in version of the imps that oh, were yeah, in Rainbow yeah. Dash's micro. Oh, one thing I forget to mention, this is the same artist that did the Rainbow Dash micro. And yeah. my, my, my opinion on the Rainbow Dash micro is no secret. I didn't like it. And in this one, Tony Fleece really amped it up. Like, his work on this comic has improved by a lot. Anyone else has any memorable scenes in this comic that they like? Well, oh, aside from Best Pony being Best Pony because Best Pony is Best Pony and <laughs> Rarity is Uh-oh. just mm, uh, nothing else. Nothing that, else? That's really? it. But that, 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 that's the thing. Maybe that's why that's where the the micro fails in that it's a Fluttershy micro. Oh yeah, Rarity is awesome in it. What about Fluttershy? Rarity is awesome in it. That, that's <laughs> Kind of the point with uh, <laughs> this this comic in my right. regard. Rarity is awesome and the visual style is great. Everything else is just on the meh to okay uh, scale. <laughs> okay. For, the final page is pretty fun. Seeing all now that the now that Fluttershy isn't hiding anymore, her friends get to see and even play with her uh, her creations, mm. which. Truthfully, interactive art is pretty fun. <laughs> I, now I'm afraid I still have to raise a point. There's uh, the second-to-last word box. Even though I suspect they do not truly understand 
the artistic impulses that drive me. Rarity is standing right next to you. She's right there, to the, to the left of Fluttershy. <laughs> she will not understand the artistic impulses that drive you? Not the same really? level as her. It's really just <laughs> chaos! <laughs> I, I, okay, I can defend it. I can defend it. Sorry, I can defend it. So, you know, it's a great it's a great image overall. It's just that one line that stands out at me. But it's fun seeing all her friends mm. with these creations. And again, even if it's just a pattern fill, it's a well done pattern fill oh, on good. all the uh, all the woven uh, artwork. It works. it works. It doesn't take too much space, and it gives the texture needed. Mm. And Lion, what about you? Any scenes that are memorable? Uh, sorry, any scenes that are memorable for you? Well, nothing that really stood out. Mainly because I was probably distracted from the fact that it has a strange rhythm as a comic. Just really oh, yeah. weird. It's like, what if, what if, what if, what if? <laughs> She's like, says it five times. It's it's a very weird rhythm hmm. to have. There are some that really worked well. Just be, the last panel of that, prior to last panel of that a particular page, you just, you just got a low angle shot of Fluttershy being all brave. It, the wings could have had more work. But it was a very nice one. It's like, yes, I am proud. I will do it. <laughs> it, it, it shows, oh, okay, well, maybe I'm going to do it. And then she destroys herself. <laughs> there, uh, It's not poorly drawn, but there are some nice metaphors, just like being buried under criticism or floating on praise. Those were really nice little metaphors that they put in there. Oh, I didn't even oh, notice yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, when they are throwing criticism at Fluttershy and you yeah. see the speech bubbles are piling up on her and uh, then the, she's floating over them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I awesome. saw that. I saw yeah, that, but I didn't thing. really understand from that point of metaphors. Uh, I, I liked those little metaphors in there. Oh, okay, cool. They're not the best, but you know, they, they they help to make it work a little bit more. All right, all right. So, uh, James, you give yours, right? Yeah, I already said what I thought of. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, what are you going to do next, James? Oh well. <laughs> Well, what do you know? The next comic that we're going to be reviewing next week, or the week after, or, oh no, wait a minute, we have Buck! Oh, oh my. my god! There is going to be no comic review until after next week, because we're not going to be able to have anything prepared until we come back from Buck. Uh, give me a second, James, give me a second, James, let me see, blah, blah, blah. Uh, probably we will, um, I just need to put it on the YouTube queue. <laughs> probably, <laughs> but I, I hope so. Just in case we have something prepared, uh, it's definitely going to be issues number 13 and 14 of the main My Little Pony series. That is the Pirate Arc. Yo-ho. Also known as, also yeah. known as the Salty Seamer. Oh, my God. Oh, God. That's the title of the comic. Salty Seamer. This is going to be fun. I cannot wait to review this one because... I, I I can't wait to see what you guys think of it, and uh, if I stand alone in the this is awesome or in the uh, I, I have more. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, give me a my opinion with. So, <laughs> Lion, you, you're you're into pirates, right? Well, I did draw a few pirate mares, and I love the designs that I came up with. Uh, so <laughs> I'll try and get you on this one because you're like pirates. <laughs> yar, yo, pirates, yar, army hearties. But anywho, James? I wish I was better writer. <laughs> oh, it's okay, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's the end of the review for today. Uh, that was the MBS Show Reviews. This has been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. I'm Lightheart Cartoon. And I'm a Fluttershy fanboy. Yay, <laughs> finally! Showing your true colors. Come on, never do that. Tell. <laughs> yeah. tell. Never do that. Again. Cream and pink. <laughs> Anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Have a good one, everybody. Laters. Adios.